So, um, hello, welcome. Uh, so Josh and I are going to go through some of the stuff we have um, uh, documented for how to create a Gypsy um, module. Uh, the idea of this is that you want to create software that other people can easily use on the cluster without having to install the software themselves. So for this, um, we have two GitHub repositories. One of them is, both of them are github.com slash Libre Institute. One of them is gypsy underscore mod underscore source. So this is like gypsy module source. And the other one is gypsy underscore module, module underscore config. Maybe this one should have the word module um, just to make the name more consistent. So um, what are these two uh, repositories? Um, we have two of them because the files have to live in, live in two different locations on the Gypsy cluster. Um, um, and uh, uh, one of them, the module source, lives at the Gypsy directory shared Gypsy uh, LIBD directory that Mark Miller gave us permissions to um, save these files. Um, um, this is not like an unlimited disk directory. So it should be only really, you know, the essential software, nothing really big. Then uh, module config, um, that one lives at gypsy shared gypsy module files uh, slash libd. So they're slightly different locations. That's why we need two GitHub repositories to make sure they match. Um, and uh, if you are going to be doing this quite a bit, we recommend editing your bash RC file to add these two aliases, mod source and mod Lua. Uh, Lua is really the, the type of configuration file that we're going to use. All of this is using something called LMod, uh, which is a module utility. Um, and so they have their help files here. Help files here. So the idea is that, um, you, you know, you identify some software you want to use. Um, and so the first thing we would do is go to the module source um, to create a new module. We have here some um, actual steps you can follow. So the idea is that um, um, you, you navigate to uh, Gypsy share Gypsy LIBD. And if this is the first module for a particular software that you're creating, you should create a directory for it. Inside that directory, you should create a directory that has only the version number of the directory. Um, and inside of it, we're going to have a readme file that's going to have all the um, installation setups. And that's the file that we're going to version control on the GPC module source. We won't control any of the software itself, just that readme. Um, so that's the idea for this uh, module. Um, and uh, we need to make sure that the permissions are set in such a way that um, people, uh, that you can edit everything, that's the seven, uh, that people in your user group can also edit it. So that's, uh, for example, like me, Emily, uh, who used to work with us and other people. And then, but you also need to make sure that everyone else can read it and execute. So that's the five, the last number there. Um, so that's this directory over here, the module source. Uh, this is the one we're gonna spend the most of our time working on. Um, and then once you're done with that, then you can create the companion um, module config file. So for that, you need to go to gypsy share gypsy module files LIDD. And inside of it, um, you need to uh, create also again, a directory for the software name. So in, in this example, that's high set too. But note that uh, in contrast to module config, sorry, to module source, in module config, we do not create um, uh, uh, a directory for the version inside of it. We simply create a file that has the same, the same version number dot Lua. This number over here, in this, in this example, 2.0.4 has to match exactly the directory name that we used in the other, in the module source. Um, um, now the dot Lua extension, that's the, um, what LMOD, the 
the software that we're using uh, recognizes as a configuration file for um, for um, for one of the um, you know for a module for a given module. Um, and so this is a, these files, the .lua files, are the ones that we're going to version control on the Gypsy module comp, the GitHub repository. So um, as an example, then I'm going back to the module source to, to actually see how some of these files look at, look like. So let's look at um, high set two. Inside that folder, we have a folder for each version. So the example we were using was 2.04. So let's look at that. This actually was made two years ago. And so the structure that we have in these readme files is just, is a, a lot of it is information that we wanna keep track of in case uh, we need to debug anything or in case we need to make, for example, um, a, Docker, a Docker file uh, for the software, which is something we actually had to do uh, for our internal RNAC pipeline. So here we have the installation commands. So we keep track of everything you, the actual person installing the software, had to do to install it. In, part in this particular case for high set two, this is a fairly simple scenario because you download a specific file. So this, uh, this is from the, the high set two uh, website. They have a download section and inside of there, there's a file for HiSet2 version 2.04 that is already pre-compiled for Linux. Um, uh, Linux uh, with uh, 64 bytes. Um, and so that's the Linux that we have on the cluster. So you, we download that using the wget command, which is um, a shell command. Um, it's a zip file, so we need to unzip it. For that, we use the unzip command. That creates actually a high set two dash zero point dash and a high set two dash zero two point zero point four directory. Uh, here we're just changing the permissions to make sure that everyone can execute all those files. Um, but we don't want to version control them uh, because, I, like I said, I, we only really want to version control the README files here. Mm -hmm. So then we need to make sure that. Um, Anything that has high high set two dash two point zero point four, uh, so that's both the zip file as well as the directory. Those files are uh, ignored, um, so we add them to a dot git ignore file. Once we do that, we version control the files uh, dot git ignore and the readme. Uh, make sure also that you change the permissions to seven seven five. Um, <clears throat> So those are the installation commands for high set two. Then we also include the reproducibility. So here we want to include the output from these four uh, shell commands. So one, you want the module space list output because that lists which are the modules you have loaded. And this is very important when installing software because uh, some of these modules, uh, when you load them, they might change the path environment variable or other environment variables. Um, and so knowing what you had loaded uh, can affect things. Um, we also want the date. So this part, in particular case, this was done on October, October the 23rd, 2018. We want the user, so that was me, in case we need to ask who, you know, the person who did it for more information. And we also want the computer where this was done um, because um, you're normally doing this inside a QRSA Q R S A A Q R S H session. <laughs> um, um, you want to keep track of the computer in case there's anything that went wrong later. Um, so, so that is this README file that we have on the source. The companion Lua file on the config. So, uh, we have our high set to folder. Inside of there, there's no more folders. There's only Lua files. So let me open the two point. 2.0.4.lua file. Now this is a Lua syntax file. It always includes these, you know, lines at the top. Um, I don't really remember what they do, but we always include those. Uh, then there's a little help message um, that a user can get uh, that describes what that module, module does. So basically we say like, oh, this module loads 
X solver version uh, YY, whatever that is. Then there's also this what is command. So this is actually high set too. Um, then uh, we only want the modules to be um, uh, to be able to run them when we are on a QRS, QRSH session or the transfer node. And so for that, um, Lua uh, LMOD uses this particular syntax where you can get an environment variable from the operating system. In this particular case, we're, up, we're getting the host name variable. And then you can ask, you can uh, make a, a string match asking, does it contain the word compute? All the computers in the Gypsy cluster, all those computers that we have start with like the name compute dash um, and then three numbers. So that's why we're using this. Um, also, uh, oh, sorry, we don't want this to be runnable on a transfer node. And so we say, and it doesn't match. Oh, sorry, we do want it on the transfer node. If it doesn't match compute and it doesn't match transfer, then we get an error. And the error says like this package can only be loaded on a computer transfer node. Please use QRSH to connect. This is just a reminder for people to make sure that um, they're not using these modules on the on the master node, which is also the login node. Um, mm -hmm. Because if, you, if everyone uses stuff on the login node, then it makes the computer really slow. So basically, you know, this is very easy to copy paste across modules. You just need to change the um, software name, the version. Um, so we change that over here, uh, but then um, then we have a, mo a loading message. So for us, because these are like our Libre uh, LIBD control modules, so we have a little message here saying loading Libre module four, and then we say the version, the software slash the version. Um, after that, uh, there's a couple different commands you can do. For example, here we're adding to the path environment variable this particular location. So this is why I said that on the module source, it's really important to have the module list information because each of these modules changes some environment variables. For example, this one is changing the path variable. Um, and so we're making sure that at the beginning of the path variable, we have this particular location where, it's, where, it's, where that is where a high set two point, uh, I mean version 2.0.4, is installed. And so this particular location actually matches the tree from the module source. So remember the module source that leaves a gypsy share gypsy libd. Inside of it, we created a directory high set two. Point, high set two. Uh, then we created a directory version, uh, uh, ver version number 2.0.4. And then um, this high set two dash 2.0.4 directory that got created when we unzipped um, our file over here. And inside of it, uh, if we look at that, so I'm just gonna access the cluster. Um, so, inside of that, folder, there's actually a bunch of things. There's the high, high set two program, high set two dash build, a bunch of things. Um, and so if I type right now, like for example, which high set two is like, oh, you cannot find it in any, in my path variable, which is like a really long path. But um, um, by loading the module and appending this to the path, um, so I could do module load high set to 2.0.4. Now, now I can say which high set to. And the location that it gives me is, you know, Gypsy shared, Gypsy, LIBD, high set to 2.0.4, high set to dash 2.0.4, and then that's the program high set to, right? So that's how these things work. Um, um, and uh, because we've done several programs by now, we have some more complicated cases. So if I'm making one myself, um, I might, you know, double check some of the files that we have made in the past uh, and just edit those. So for example, one of them is a bit more complicated, I think is this one. Um, 
for example, these SAM tools, there's also a man path. Man is for short for manual, not for you know, man or woman. Um, uh, manual. Uh, so you can add uh, this particular installation of SAM tools it's a bin directory and a man, uh, man and the man one. So you need to make those things such that like the manual command will know where to find the particular manual for some tools and the software provides that. Um, there's uh, Python tools are always a lot more complicated. So uh, let's see. Uh, Python, for example, has, a, there's the path, but there's also the Python path uh, variable and might depend on a specific version of Python. So you can actually load other modules using the load command here on a Lua file. Um, this, you know, this one was a bit complicated and uh, when Gypsy changed to, to the CentOS, CentOS uh, system a couple of months ago, we had to remake a lot of modules. Um, a lot of them broke with, uh, with system like with global system dependencies changing, um, so that's the idea for this. Now, like I've said before, here we really really only need to version control on the Gypsy module config only the Lua files, and on the mod source only the the big um, only the README files. So and the gitignore files, so nothing nothing beyond that. So the getting nor for the folder high set to 2.0.4, uh, which you know, only ignores uh, the rest of the files here. So that's the idea of all of this. Um, then users, if you go to module config, gypsy module config, in order for a user to really use any of these tools, they, they need to run module use, gypsy share, gypsy module files, libd. And then they will be able to type module space avail, which is short for available, and see all the tools that we have uh, made, um, you know, shared with everyone in the cluster. But if you are doing this all the time, we have here some instructions that you can edit your bash rc file and, um, and always, uh, you basically run this module use command. So that's the idea of this. Um, and it makes you know everyone's life easier. Um, it's a little bit of pain the first time, but it's basically the same amount of pain you would need to uh, go through to install something manually. Um, some of the installations gonna be more complicated, and so uh, reading some of the README files for other things we've installed can be useful to figure out how to do some of these installations. Um, now, let's say that uh, you. Uh, uh, um, you version control files that were not the readme files over here. Um, in that point, then we would request that you please like edit the GitHub history and remove um, remove any files that you uh, uh, version control and you shouldn't have version controlled. And so that actually is a similar in scenario to um, a blog post. Uh, so. Um, to this blog post uh, where um, we committed a big file and you need to remove it. Um, so I'm going to add it here. Um, so let's say you, know, you, you, you added something you shouldn't have added. Uh, um, so um, the way to fix this is first, um, first you need to uh, remove them from um, from Git. So uh, let me see if we can do a live example of one of these ones. Um, uh, uh, I think price is a, a recent version, right? Hmm. Okay. Um, I actually don't have um, permissions to edit this one. Uh, Do you want me to go? Um, the other uh, QC tool, if you want to check that. Yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, 
I mean, we, we'll do this later. Uh, Josh and I will do this later. Uh, but like, uh, just to explain a little bit of the idea of how this works, um, um, there's this tool called uh, BFG Repo Cleaner. Mm -hmm. BFG stands for, um, uh, what does it stand for? It's I think Big uh, File uh, GitHub, Big File Git, I think. Um, um, the idea is that this um, tool is a Java tool, so you need to, um, uh, there's a download button over here, so let's say you wanted to use this in the cluster, you would copy the, right click, copy the address, then on your home directory, you could type w get, you know, copy that. Um, this will download a file called bfg dash version number dot jar. Uh, once you have that, that's like the only installation really you really need to do for installing this tool. Um, the next thing is if you already know the names of the files you need to delete, you can use BFG delete files uh, option and like specify the file names that you want to delete from the version history. Um, you can also use this script blobs bigger than and give it any, any size here and delete those files. Um, in particular for the scenario, we might need to use this one, BFG delete files, because uh, we already know that we want to delete some specific files um, uh, by name, not by size. Um, uh, but in order to be able to run this, you first uh, have to remove them from um, uh, uh, BFG. What it does, it, it looks through the, um, it looks through the whole GitHub history, and if it finds, you know, the particular file, in this case, let's say ID on the score, uh, DSA or RSA, if it finds that file, it, it removes it from the version history, only if that file is not present on your current files. So one quick way to check that is, um, um, is uh, uh, one quick way, what? I was going to say was going to be like checking over here on the website on github.com. But in our particular case, I think we haven't been able to push to github.com because we have big files. So um, the way you can do that is to, um, you need first to run uh, git remove, um, space the files um, and that syntax, they don't explain it over here, but um, uh, let me go back to our source directory. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just gonna copy the, the QC tool readme file. Uh, over here. I'm going to type git remove qc tool, uh, but um, um, the actual version I want is not it's not um, the base version of git remove. I want to delete them from git control, but I want to keep the local files. Um, and for that, I need to uh, Google because I forgot. The syntax for this. Uh, uh, well, yeah, cached. Um, so good. So it's git space rm for remove, then mm -hmm. the option cache to keep the files. Um, so this. Uh, uh, Was QC tool not version control? It might not be. Oh, okay, so let's try. Uh, so then I don't need uh, my, my backup. Um, uh, which one was it? Um, price. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the recursive option. Right. So this removed a lot of files over here from version control. 
Um, if I now type git status, it says that uh, a lot of files were uh, deleted from version control. So that's okay uh, because we don't want them. But if I look at uh, PRS price um, version 2.2.8, the files are still there present, right? So that's okay, still okay. Uh, something else, this is a really uh, smaller things, but I'm just gonna make sure that we have um, uh, well, I was gonna make the name lowercase, but uh, we I see that we do have some names that are uppercase, so that's okay. Um, uh, what I do want to make is to uh, to make this two point two point eight. Uh, oh, but I don't have the permissions for that. Okay. Anyway, so git remove uh, uh, removed all those files. Um, uh, but I still want under version 2.2.8 to version control the readme.file. Um, that's the only one I do want in version control. Um, so at this point, if I make a commit message, um, then we could run BFG to delete, delete these things. I'm going to stop the recording here because we need we need a bunch of permissions, uh, but that's kind of the idea. So you type git rm cache r then the directory name to delete files. Then you can use uh, you make a commit after deleting the files, but keeping them keeping them local. Then you can run bfg to actually fully delete them from the git version history. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because we just want the readme files. Uh, uh, but that's kind of the idea of all of this. So I'll end it here. Um, zoom, stop recording.